When a very successful video game franchise is milked so hard that they make a 4 episode anime, you can't imagine the adaptation will be very good. And of course it wasn't. But at the time, I had no idea that this was based on a video game before I watched the anime. And I had watched it with a group of friends after someone in the group chat had gassed it up so much that it was going to be as good as another. Maybe if I had known how milked it was, or I wasn't told that this anime was amazing, I wouldn't have hated it as much after I watched it. And you could tell I hate myself even more than the anime because I'm forcing myself to talk about it for content. So, actually, I want to start off praising this franchise. Well, the video game franchise at least. The video game franchise spanned six games. The franchise built a large fan base and was all over YouTube in the early 2010s. In 1996, a young college student named Makoto Ketoin released a game titled Corpse Party. Corpse Party ended up coming back almost nine years later, this time on mobile devices and later on Windows. Corpse Party 2006 was the first video game to come out in the franchise, and it received high ratings from both audiences and critics, boasting a 4.7 out of 5 rating on audience scores and a 9 out of 10 rating on Steam with 984 reviews. This game came out on iOS, PSP, and Windows, which led to a lot of Let's Plays by iconic YouTubers like PewDiePie, Berlizzi, Markiplier, and more. Overall, this game was received very well and was one of the biggest horror games at the time, with PewDiePie averaging 4.8 million viewers per episode over a 17 episode span. He also received almost 9 million viewers on the first episode alone, so clearly this was a very popular game. The first game is actually the one that received both an OVA titled Corpse Party Missing Footage and a sequel to that OVA in a 4 episode anime known as Corpse Party Tortured Souls. After the vast success of the first game, Corpse Party 2 Book of Shadows was released in Japan on September 1st, 2011, which was also received very well by the audience score. On Steam, it has 302 reviews with a rating of 89 out of 100. And with a less amount of reviews on Google being 6, it got a 5 out of 5. This game was released on 5 different platforms, including Microsoft Windows, iOS, PlayStation Portable, Sony PSP, and PlayStation Vita. This game, like the first one, received a lot of YouTube Let's Plays, and I think it's important to say how vital this game was for anime games, horror anime, and anime in general at the time. Of course, there had been a lot of horror anime released before this game came out, but this game truly popularized and shed light onto the medium, paving the way for shows like Another, which relied heavily on gore and shock value to captivate an audience. I mean, gore had been done before Corpse Party with things like Higurashi's original 2006 anime, but the game had made it more available to the mainstream and helped bring a new wave and style to anime. So overall, the importance of this game and impact it made on the anime scene cannot be understated. Two more Corpse Party games would be released before the four episode anime would come out, being Corpse Party 2, Dead Patient, and Corpse Party Birthday Bash, which came out on May 29th, 2013 and August 2nd, 2012 respectively. Corpse Party Birthday Bash was released on PSP and Windows, being a visual novel which took the horror and bloodthirsty nature of the games into a more lighthearted fashion. The main villain of most of the Corpse Party games is a vengeful spirit named Sachiko, who was murdered in a school that is the setting of most of the games. This is a spin on her character, and she is definitely still evil and bloodthirsty, but the story is more humorous and about her wanting to celebrate her birthday more than anything else. She brings the previous survivors of the other games and makes them compete in a race, and the winner gets to leave the school. This game was given a 9 out of 10 on Steam, with 118 reviews, and a 3.9 out of 5 on GOG.com. Course Party 2 Dead Patient came out later and helped someone as big as the Anime Man popularize his channel, with his videos on the game getting millions of views. The game was first released in Japan, so the YouTubers who could understand Japanese could post walkthroughs of the game while translating it to the audience who couldn't speak English. It was a big turning point for the anime and for YouTube in general, as the fanbase of Course Party was huge and allowed more people to make a name for themselves on this platform. Joey's talked about playing games that came out early in Japanese and the fact that they helped him grow his channel, since not a lot of people could post content on the game as they couldn't understand the language. Corpse Party Dead Patient has a 91% rating on Google, 7 out of 10 on Steam, and 79% on Humble Bundle. This is the game released before the anime as well, so they used the popularity grown from three successful games and posted a poorly written and rushed anime that was used only to milk as much profit as they could out of a beloved series. I never played a single game and don't know much about the franchise besides what I have seen the Anime Man and PewDiePie play on YouTube. 
Before this video and the research I did, I didn't even know how big the fanbase actually was. This disheartens me even more because the anime had so much potential if they could just flesh out the aspects of the game that made the fandom love it in the first place. Now, I'm done discussing the games as there are no more games that came out before the anime series had been made, but just know that remakes were made and in 2014 Corpse Party Blood Drive had come out. There was also a manga series created because of the games later on down the line, which sell very high on Amazon. Like, god damn! Let's get to the worst anime I've ever seen, Corpse Party Tortured Souls. The people who I had watched it with had hyped it up as, I kid you not, a 9 if not 10 out of 10 anime. I believe they actually gave the anime a 9 out of 10, so to say I was pretty happy to see it would be an understatement, especially because at the time I have really got into horror anime after seeing another for the first time. So I had finished episode 1 which felt like 2 hours of anime even though I had only watched 30 minutes of anime, but I was fine with writing it off as a show with a slow start and hoping that there was just more to come. Episode 1 was poorly paced, poorly written, and genuinely just felt rushed even though I didn't even know of the game's existences at the time. And looking back at it now, it was paced so poorly because they were only done with about a 50th of the game by the end of episode 1 when they should have been done with at least a 4th of the game. Episodes 2 and 3 followed suit, being boring, poorly paced, and genuinely the most dreadful experience I had watching anime. It was edgy for the sake of being edgy, gory in a bad way which ruined the game's excellent use of gore, and overall the atmosphere of the anime was just pathetic. And somehow, even though it was life or death, the stakes felt very, very low. However, this was nothing in comparison to episode 4, which had quite possibly the worst ending I have ever seen in an anime. And yes, I know it was based on the game, but the ending was rushed and the development of the villain just happened completely out of nowhere, as well as the solution to get out of the high school. Another bad anime I've seen is called Midori, which is written very badly except for the ending. It was at least fleshed out and made sense. Midori killing herself after losing her husband was actually pretty sad, even though I didn't know that's how it ended on my first watch since it was in a Japanese song. I've watched gameplay of the Corpse Party games in preparation of this video, which actually seemed very good, and I genuinely felt sorry for the fanbase. The fandom is so diehard and loving of this franchise, only to be taken advantage of for loving something too much. Instead of just leaving the very successful video games as just video games, they wanted to money grab and make something terrible and lazy out of a well-made video game series. Sounds like uh, an anime known as Naruto. Is Corpse Party actually the worst anime ever made? Probably not. I'm sure there are a lot worse anime out there, and I mean, at least Corpse Party has decent animation, but I thought it was the worst anime I had ever seen even before doing the research, and after the research, I actually dislike it even more than I did before. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you would like another video like this where I do a lot of research and go through old video games or old adaptations of anime, please get this video to 50 likes. Thank you again, have a great day.